Labor's climate change bill passed the Senate today after receiving support from the crossbench. It commits Australia to a 43% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared to 2005 levels. To understand what this means for the business sector, I'm joined by Matt Rennie from Rennie Partners. Matt, thanks for your time today. Are businesses prepared for these emission reductions changes? Well, this is really where the rubber hits the road. Uh, for the first time, government has uh, put the connective tissue in between the commitments that are being made at, at, uh, through the NDCs right through to uh, the beginning of legislation. But, you know, I think business could be forgiven for not really knowing what the implications are for them just yet. There's, there's not really enough in there to draw much from. Yeah, will this 43% reduction in emissions, tar in emissions really force businesses to drastically change the way they operate? Look, it will eventually. Um, part of the issue is, of course, that on the one hand, we now have uh, a legislated commitment to a 43% reduction in net zero by 2050. But on the other hand, we haven't yet started to think through exactly how business will uh, move away from carbon and, in particular, what costs it'll need to incur in order to do that. And so there'll be a lot of people in a lot of boardrooms thinking through that today, I would have thought. Yes, yeah, so what are the next steps then for a business that does put out a lot of em carbon emissions? What do they have to do? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, I guess there's a couple of things, really. The, the first is that we need to establish um, some sort of policy around uh, what the, the targets per sector or, or whether it's a carbon tax or, or really who, how this legislation obligates who to do what uh, is really the next step. And that's really, I guess, the, the process of commitment. On the other side, from the business perspective, uh, people are already now starting to think ahead on behalf of customers and shareholders and employees and financiers um, what they need to do. Uh, and that's really reduce as much carbon as they can out of their uh, immediate operations and supply chain, which is no mean feat. Yeah, are there any sectors that you can see that are going to be clearly much more affected than others by these changes? Yeah, it's really all about the, the green premium, I guess. So the, the, the increase in cost that businesses have to bear in order to go green or to use less carbon. Uh, for something like electricity, um, we're virtually at cost neutrality. The, the choice between renewables and, and coal is, um, I guess, almost yesterday's news in a way. And the real challenge there is the doability of electrification. But, but when we move into some of the secondary sectors like transport uh, and then into manufacturing, it gets a lot more difficult. Um, you know, we're a long way away from green steel and green concrete, I, I guess. And, and so the, the real choice that businesses need to make is um, do they swim too far out from shore, uh, you know, without any prospect of getting back in terms of taking on some of these costs of decarbonisation? Yeah, what does this bill mean for the security of Australia's energy market, which is still very reliant on coal-fired power? Yeah, in a way, the bill was pretty inevitable uh, in the sense that um, it's now almost um, obvious, I guess, that Australia needed to commit to net zero in order to maintain its international position. And certainly, European-based businesses that operate in Australia are already operating in this way, and, and the financial community is almost becoming the new UN, I guess, in, in enforcing some of these uh, carbon reduction initiatives. But for, for Australia as a whole, it, it's really a question of um, how we reduce those emissions. They're really cut into three parts. Uh, there's energy, there's transport and there's agriculture. Um, we're, pretty, uh, we're pretty lucky, I guess, in that with some quick wins we can make on the energy front, transport's coming, but the real challenge is, is manufacturing agriculture over the next 20 years. And do you expect companies that sell carbon credits or carbon offsets to really expect a big pickup in demand now? Look, this, this um, entire green revolution that we're experiencing is opening up new lines of business for a whole range of, of market players. And, and I guess we're seeing the full range of, um, of opportunities and risks come in all of those sectors, one of which uh, is the, the aggregation and the sale of, of carbon credits. Um, it's an enormously murky field at the moment. There are views obviously going on. I mean, at the crux of it, we just need to make sure that uh, when uh, uh, an ACCU is generated, it's actually reducing carbon, which is one of the challenges we've got at the moment. And what does this bill mean for Australia's credibility amongst other nations around the world? It really increases our credibility in the sense that uh, we're really putting our money where our mouth is from a commitment perspective. Um, the challenge, though, is, is now transition. And for industry that's thinking through uh, what it might mean for it, uh, the real question is how fast will targets be brought down through policy, uh, through what mechanisms will they be enforced, and then lastly, what costs 
uh, will they incur in, in order to, to reduce carbon? It's not simple simply to, to move away from natural gas to electricity for some sectors. It's not simple to move towards hydrogen from natural gas. And you know, many of the premiums we see in, in say, concrete, for example, are about 75% over the current cost of production. And so there's a real challenge ahead in terms of transitioning to this end state. Matt Rennie from Rennie Partners, thanks for your time today. Thank you.